Hey, 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 Taff and an out of this world story from our space. There are plenty of people who think ghosts are real. Ghosts have a way of haunting us, even if all we want is to never see them again. Today on our space, we hear from some OPs who just can't quite shake a couple of devilish ghouls. Our first OP has to leave the country before they can get some peace and quiet. Wife ended her marriage two days ago. Hi everyone, this is mostly an off my chest post. I posted an arse last divorce, but this is more appropriate I think. Just people to talk to is great, to be honest. I'm living in a foreign country for work, so I don't have any friends here, and certainly have no family. My wife went away to work somewhere more exciting for a few months, and she came home two days ago and told me our marriage was over. She has some mental health problems in the past, and she apparently met someone who could better support her through them. So, a nine-year relationship, two-year marriage, is gone now. I feel like crap. Two days ago, she came home. I had the flowers, her favorite food, everything ready. She walked in the door and told me we were done. I was destroyed. Yesterday, I would randomly break down, probably three or four times. Today, I'm sure I have one or two of those breakdowns still ahead of me, and one behind me. I'm talking to lawyers, but we are both foreigners to the country, so lawyers are looking into it before committing to the paperwork. Right now, it looks simple. She wants what's hers and intends to leave me with what is mine, and so far there are no disagreements over what belongs to whom. We have no kids, and she doesn't want the cat. So the logistics seem sorted out enough, foreign country aside. Despite all of that, I can't stop thinking about her. Everything I do was something we would do. Anything I watch was something we would watch. Even the games I play, places I visit, those are games we would play and places we would visit. She was such a huge part of my life, and while I'm sure it's cliché, this whole mess really felt quite sudden. I tried to see if there was ground to stay together on, but she was very forward in admitting that while she was away she cheated on me, she offered the sex, and she didn't regret it. Twice. Before those revelations, I was willing, hopeful even, to have her in the spare room, willing to try and work it out. Hell, I might have been able to work with that first one. Maybe. Probably not. The second thing on that list. But each one of those things had harder than the last. I told her she needed to go, her mom was nearby, and we would sort everything out later. When she finally left the house that night, I was just a shell. I suppose it makes the wondering why or who or what easy, but accepting the reality is far from it. She says she never cheated before, and since she was so forward with everything above, there is no reason not to believe her. I'm still young, 29, but that makes it feel worse. I've shared almost a third of my life with this girl. Halloween was always her favorite, Christmas tied or a close second, both of those are around the corner, and for the first time in almost a decade, and really, as an adult, I'll be spending them without the girl I promised to spend my life with. Despite all that, I keep checking Facebook, checking texts, hoping for the message that tells me it was all a joke, or a mistake, or a dream. Despite all that, I want her here. I miss her so much. I loved her so much. Also, add one to my breakdown tally up there. I'm so sorry this happened to you, OP. It's not exactly the warm welcome you want after you haven't seen the person you love most for quite some time. Everything that you're feeling is normal, OP. All of your feelings are valid. It's a total punch to the gut. And you're exactly right. You spent a huge portion of your life with someone who just threw it away overnight. It's realistic to want to work it out because of that. But in reality, you shouldn't have to want to be with someone who disrespected you the way that she did. You deserve better than that. Update. Hey all. Five months ago I made a post. Ex-wife left me in a pretty brutal way. Wasn't sure if I would post an update. Here I am, no. Shortly after she split, she was back and forth over if she actually wanted a relationship to end. She would call to see how I was doing and I would start to give in. Then she would say something off enough to remind me what I was actually going through. Conversations ended when I would just ask for info I was missing for the lawyers. Eventually, she said she would not talk to me, but only to the lawyer. Then, she would try and reach out for something directly to me, and that cycle repeats quite a bit. She showed up around midnight at the house around a week after she told me that we were done, and that whole night left me pretty destroyed. She opened the door with her key, which I took back, and just showed up. We talked. I tried to see if there was anything worth salvaging, but I made it pretty clear that the job of convincing me was with her. She didn't know what she wanted, but is still stuck by the fact that she didn't regret what she did. She left again that night, and the old phone calls happened. Less frequently, but still happened. I made it more and more clear I was moving forward with a divorce, and I would only slow that down if she could pull a miracle. 
starting with real remorse and ending with what would have likely been an actual miracle. The regret or miracle doesn't happen, and she turned pretty vindictive at some points. The calls turned into demands for money. She was touring the U.S. in hotels she couldn't afford, which turned into demands that I support her since she was legally still my wife. None of them worked out for her very well, but still got to me. Now, I'm just waiting for the call from my lawyer confirming everything is complete. The agreements, documents, payments, etc. were sorted out by the end of December. The unfending and unfollowing of her and her family was done by January. I forgot about her mom until I saw a random post on Facebook. I just need confirmation the courts are done. I've recently turned 30, and I'm still living in my not-home country, so I've been hesitant to go out much. The worst part, though, 100% the worst part, are the dreams. Being with her, happy in all sorts of awesome places, waking up beside her, seeing the smiles, only to actually wake up, in the dark and alone. That is the part that killed me, and while happening less, still kills me. I wish the dreams would stop, or I would just wake up from the crappy five-month one I've been having. I don't know when I'll start looking at relationships again. I've become pretty introverted, to be honest. The upside is, my few friends are good at dragging me out when I should be out, but most of them are happily married, which isn't always what I want to be around. It's hard to replace someone you love with all your heart, as much as I wouldn't mind getting on with that part. Anyways, thanks for the kind words so far. I appreciate all your faces. Obviously, she doesn't want you if she slept with someone else and doesn't regret it. She's just playing games with you. As soon as she knew you weren't her little puppet to control anymore, she went for the jugular. Update. Survived to infidelity. Thanks, everyone. So three years ago, I came here at a low point in my life. My post is still up in my history, and I'm on mobile, so I'm not going to link things. But today, I survived infidelity. Six months after she left, I met an amazing person. We started out as sad, lonely friends, quickly growing inseparable. We knew it couldn't last because of our jobs. Leaving her was honestly even harder than the divorce. But we knew it had to happen eventually. And it was hard in a different way. Also in a past post. But I was happy at this point. I had met someone life-changingly vibrant. And it ended as we knew it had to. No cheating. No backstabbing. Just life. When I moved back home, I decided to work on myself. Lose weight. Get into old hobbies. Play the games I want. Try streaming, which I've always wanted to do. I kept cooking. Explored local food. I just worked on being me. I got a promotion at work. I have another one coming soon. Today, a year and a half after that, I've been seeing someone seriously for about a year. She's beautiful and caring and funny and, most importantly, honest. I'm traveling for work as we speak, out of country four months, but I'm coming back after and we are moving into a house we've bought together and is being built as I type. I can honestly say I have zero concern about what she's doing back home because I trust her fully, which I didn't think was possible to do again three years ago. I'm going to go home in four months, see her and my cat, and have an amazing Christmas, hopefully proposing in the new year. Things have moved quickly for us, and I honestly would have never given much thought to my ex. I don't think I realized how much I didn't think about her anymore, until I was curating my Facebook about three months ago and saw a slew of old pictures of me and her together. I had removed everything about her previously, or so I thought. Turns out she unblocked me, and so I had to spend another half hour getting rid of those too. I took a liberty of a quick glance at her profile. Looks like she gave birth 12 months after our divorce. And single shortly after. That was enough for me. I just didn't care. And that in and itself felt awesome. I was free and didn't care. So to everyone here in the midst of crisis, you got this. It isn't easy. The suck will be insane at first. My own thoughts were scrambled. It was pure misery. Over six months, a year, two years later, the ex would occasionally be in the back of my mind. But the hell of going through a cheating spouse opened a new world. The dreams of still being with her followed by the nightmare of waking up alone were gone. Now I wake up and see how much more happy I am beside my new girlfriend than I was, even in those dreams. I thought I knew what a loving, passionate, and caring relationship was. In the three years since, I've only come to realize how much better every aspect of my life has become since the divorce. How much more love, passion, and care people are capable of than what I was exposed to previously. It may take you longer, it may not, but if you focus on yourself, Find what you don't like about you and address it. It's amazing how much better life can be. If they cheated on you, they were not giving you their all. I now know what a fully committed relationship feels like, and I would never want to go back. Except to get to where I am now. I survived infidelity, and I'm in a better place for it. I really hope everyone here can one day say the same, even if it doesn't seem remotely possible now. Thanks. 
So much truth, OP. Thank you for sharing your story. Life can really rip us apart at times and it can be a complete nightmare. But after a while of focusing on ourselves and really showing ourselves the love that we deserve, we wake up from that nightmare and life turns out pretty beautiful. Do you have a survival story? Share with us in the comments below. Next up, it's scary just how much this cheater got away with for so long. My ex-spouse lived two separate lives. A life with me, a shared home, and a dog. The other is an adult content performer. My spouse of over seven years was with someone they were seeing before we got together. They never stopped seeing each other during our entire relationship or stopped enjoying their lifestyles or swinging, group sex, or everything in between, below and on top. They also filmed their numerous encounters with themselves and multiple partners and share their content to the many online adult sites and platforms that are available. After I found out about their secret life, I kept their infidelity to myself as I prepared my future without my spouse in it. I ended the relationship the day I found out, but gave the reason that things were just not working out as we were going through a very rough patch the previous two weeks and the relationship was on a city decline that last couple of years. A couple weeks after my initial breakup declaration, my ex and I had a heart-to-heart -heart talk and both of us decided separating would be the best course of action to save any kind of friendship. We would continue to live together amicably and as roommates while we prepared for our separation. Four long, torturous months. I allowed them to believe that our breakup was mutual as we remained best friends and roommates. Continuing as friends and staying in each other's futures was the best planned path for all involved because I meant so much to them and they couldn't imagine their life without me in it. During that time I was able to solely acquisition the home we shared and to plan our relationship's real demise. Four long, torturous months. I sat through the countless sobbing sessions, fake tears due to the thought of losing me as a partner, their person, their one. I gritted my teeth and bit my tongue through it all and never revealed their infidelity, their secret. As we parted ways that final time to continue our journey as friends, I blindsided them with no contact, no reconciliation, no hope of reconvening at a later date. I promised them that their infidelity and online not safe for work presence would be safe with me. In return, they'd never contact me ever again throughout our lifetimes. They understood the gravity of the terms and agreed. I blocked them completely in all aspects, or so I believed. During these past three months after they moved out, they continued to find ways to contact me, and I continued to use the levers of exposure to honor my no-contact request, but to no avail. The amount of people involved within their lifestyle that are currently protected is concerning, friends and their family included. Lives, relationships, jobs, and public views will all be affected if I sing their song. My reluctance to expose them initially was out of compassion for those who would be heavily and directly affected by the truth, but are not in their secret circle. I have learned now that is not my burden to bear. They chose their actions and the consequences that come with their choices. My silence has been a gift, a very generous gift at that. All they had to do was allow me to live my life without them in it, without their control, without them calling the narrative. But they will not let me have that one thing. The dismal thought of a future with their ever-protective wall coming down and the secrets within being known do not deter them, cannot deter them, will not deter them. Why not abide to protect what you cherish? Clearly that is the life that is true to them. They were living it before I was in their life and continue to enjoy it for over seven years behind my back. That is the question I will never receive an answer to, nor will I ever understand. I have begun a life of solitude, as every friend, family member, or person with any connection to them I have blocked from my life as well. Their secret circle has family members and mutual friends in it, hoping to protect their infidelity and not save a work persona. So filtering through everyone was a task I wasn't up for. And at this point, I also do not trust anyone with any sort of link to them. I absorb all of the untrue claims of my poor mental health due to the breakup, the hurt that I am projecting, the revenge that I seek to explain away my actions of no contact. I am in the wrong. I am the one at fault. They know that it is all untrue, yet they persist. All they needed to do was walk away. We both had the chance to move on in silence, in anonymity, forever. But they will not let me have that one simple request. My kindness and reluctance have now reached their ends. I'm prepared to sing their song. The community has a comment. Expose their dirty our secrets, mate. They broke their promise and stepped out of the deal, so you have every right to break yours and expose them. Be nice, but don't be too nice for your own good, mate. They'll just walk all over you and won't let you move on peacefully. Honestly, yeah, you made a deal, and that deal was silence for silence. Because I reached out, you now have the right to unlock your end of the bargain. It's hard when all you want to do is be done with them and completely erase them and anything that reminds you of them. If they can't respect your wishes, 
Then say la vie. You warned them. As you said, they understood the gravity of the terms and they agreed. Looks like the cat's out of the bag. What would you do? Thank you for joining us today. Be sure to like and subscribe and hit that notification bell so you don't miss out on our next video. Until next time, on our space.